Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today we're reviewing the HP Omen 15. Now this is the brand new 2020 version of HP's gaming laptop and there's actually quite a lot that we want to talk about, uh, both in terms of performance, design, thermals, battery, everything. So before we get into all of that, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on our channel and there's also the bell icon. If you click that bell icon, it makes sure you don't miss any future updates from us. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's begin. Let's start with the basic specs of the HP Omen 15. Now there's actually quite a few configurations available, but what HP's offered us for review comes with an Intel Core i7 10750H processor. It's a six core 12 thread processor. It has 16 gigs of RAM on board, a one terabyte NVMe drive, a full HD matte IPS display with a 144 Hertz refresh rate, and of course, an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti. The graphic card feels like something of a mismatch here because with the i7, all of these specs are usually like mid to top tier specs, you know, and then you have a fairly entry level GPU. So we were a little skeptical, but you know, um, personal opinions aside, the true test of this configuration really lies in performance. So that's what we did. First off, fired off a bunch of games, some of our favorite titles like uh, Doom Eternal, Metro Exodus, uh, Forza Horizon 4, etc. So you can see all of the average frame rates on the screen right now. Now these frame rates were actually recorded at the high graphics setting and one lower than high. Surprisingly, the HP 15 manages to get some pretty good frame rates like Forza Horizon crosses the 100 FPS mark. Doom Eternal crosses the 100 FPS mark. Crisis 3 runs in uh, at about 123 FPS with medium graphic settings. And honestly, visually, it looks good. The panel is actually really, really nice. And with the 144 Hz refresh rate, everything just appears smoother anyway. The benchmark numbers, again, are pretty promising for the 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor. And with 3D Mark, we see lower numbers mostly because this has got a 1650 Ti and not like a 1660 Ti or maybe even a 2060. But from what we are reviewing right now, this looks pretty good with the GPU being the only bottleneck. Moving on from the performance, directly related is thermals. Now, HP is traditionally known for poor thermals. In fact, talking within some of my friend circle about uh, HP's laptops, they all say, yeah, HP has had bad thermals for the longest time. But during my unboxing, if you guys saw that video, I noted that they have thermal fins at the back running all the way across from left to right, which is which is just bound to help heat in some way or the other. The other thing is the bottom side is actually has a huge perforation so that airflow could be managed better. And lo and behold, the thermals on this thing are wow. They're just absolutely amazing. Why? Um, during heavy gaming sessions and even creative loads like editing a 4K video, uh, rendering it even, the keyboard doesn't breach 42 degrees at any point of time. Um, the only area where you actually feel the heat is the speaker grill on top and honestly there's no reason for you to be putting your fingers there in the first place. The palm rest remains absolutely cool and all of this testing has been done in ambient temperature for between 23 and 25 degrees. So it's not even like I'm running the AC at 22 or 20 degrees, nothing like that. Um, Thermals that way are really good and that goes on to show that the CPU does not throttle. Recording our uh, CPU behavior across various games and renders, at no time did we breach the 95 degree mark, one, and secondly, therefore, there was no throttling. So that's actually a very, very, very good sign that HP seems to have figured out how to keep the heat in check. Unfortunately, there is one small downside. The perforations at the back, where you have the air inlet, right? They're actually quite large. So large that pet dander is very likely to get into your machine. In fact, the other day when I flipped the laptop over, I found quite a bit of my dog's hair stuck to the bottom vent. And they could have easily gone inside. And only after opening this up, do I see, do I realize whether there's pet dander inside or not. 
I get to open this up. So that could be a huge problem. Like there is a reason why some manufacturers have chosen to uh, use small uh, perforations instead of large ones or using thin slits instead of bigger ones. And it's to avoid ingress of foreign materials like this. Now imagine having fur stuck inside your uh, gaming laptop, like dog hair stuck inside. And over a period of time, it is going to cause massive issues. It could cause shorts, it could cause heating issues, it could even cause your fans to fail. So it's, that's just a no-no. So word of advice, every now and then, just flip the laptop over, check if there's anything stuck in the holes, clean it out, open the back if you have to. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, talking about the panel itself, it's actually, again, quite bright. It registers about 340 lux in the center. However, the sides consistently measure anywhere between 305 to 310 lux. So it's not a very consistent panel in terms of brightness, but towards the center, it's actually pretty damn good. The panel itself is actually pretty great, but what is a complete disaster is this lid. Like I cannot even begin to express how disappointing it is. It wobbles significantly. It has way too much flexed side to side. And if you close it, like this thing is practically like a trampoline. Like I'm not even kidding. You can press anywhere and it goes down so much that little kids could bounce off of this thing without any problem. Um, also, what we notice is that if you open it from one side, the whole panel just tilts. It doesn't come back to a straight line. It just, it, it's bad. And while it stays in the position you set it at, it does so after bouncing around a little bit. See, like that. It, this is just not a good experience whatsoever. The panel assembly itself feels very cheap and very thin. And I have a feeling that the panel, uh, the lid would probably be the weakest point of damage like if you were to drop this the, da the damage would mostly be here and nowhere else now next let's talk about the keyboard now interestingly the international variant of the hp omen 15 has a slightly different keyboard you don't have a number pad in that you have just the dedicated num lock print screen keys and the arrow keys lie underneath but what i have with me over here has the num pad on it so you get the number pad that's good uh, in fact, a lot of manufacturers state that no the number pad is a very critical part of any laptop keyboard in India because a lot of users ask for it. Fair enough. The keyboard features four zone lighting where the keyboard is actually divided into three distinct lighting zones with the WASD keys being the fourth. So you don't have per key RGB, but yes, you can set, set custom lights if you wanted to. The typing experience on these keys actually takes a little getting used to. These are really nice keys, no doubt. They have short travel, um, the actuation is pretty snappy and they bounce back really quickly. So the typing experience feels very sharp and very polished. However, the primary keys, are sh they feel like they've been shifted slightly to the left. So um, you have a slightly off center keyboard and it takes a little getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's actually a very, very, very good typing experience. No doubt about it. Um, the numpad works, all of the function keys, everything works just as advertised. And the really good thing is the trackpad. Now, it, the trackpad is fairly large in size. You can uh, see this in the shot over here and features a matte surface, which is again, really nice to the touch. And thankfully, HP is using precision drivers this time, which means um, your gestures work beautifully. So it really helps you navigate the Windows operating system with a lot of ease and it's it's, not, it's quick, it's responsive and that's the best part. Um, unfortunately, the trackpad doesn't feature individual left and right click buttons, which is something that I'm particularly fond of. Like it's just nicer to have those individual keys because it does allow some level of gaming using the trackpad if you absolutely had to. So it's one of those things. But with this non-separated left right click, it's a little difficult to do that. Overall, the keyboard and the trackpad, solid points there. So when it comes to IO, HP hasn't left anything out. You've got two USB 3.0 ports, a display port, a Thunderbolt port, all on the right. On the left, you have the power connector, which is a rounded pin. Uh, you've got a full-size HDMI port, another USB 3.0 port, headphone jack, and an SD card reader. 
Thankfully, because this has Thunderbolt on board, what it means is you can always expand connectivity. You can just attach a dongle to it and have more USB ports, or you could attach a monitor to this, which then further daisy chains into your accessories, etc., etc. So when it comes to the battery, the PC Mark 10 work battery uh, benchmark gave us a reading of about two hours and 30 minutes, two and a half hours on a 74 watt hour battery. Mm. Could have been better, but at the same time, maybe, you know, there are tweaks that we can apply and things you can do to increase that. This is just based off of the benchmark and it's pretty in line with what gaming laptops tend to deliver, especially when they're Intel based. The speakers on the Omen 15 are bang and all of sudden tune and they're actually laid out under this grill on top, which is a very nondescript way to play speakers like normally at first glance you would think where are the speakers but then a closer look would reveal that that's where they are under this grill now they are loud and they're pretty good for vocals they're nice for listening to light music but if you're going to get into heavy metal of course that's not going to work and neither is going to watch action movies so the dialogue seems to suffer in that if you're going to game on the speakers you're it's just advisable to not do that and just use headphones instead but yes if you were to use the speakers you could get by you have to strain a little bit in order to make out finer details especially with regards to enemy positioning or uh, you know just if there's a nice soundtrack playing for that matter you will have to strain your ears a little bit but the sound is actually pretty good i was mildly surprised that it's not as bad or as mediocre as things tend to be Last but not the least, there's also the storage on this thing. Now, unlike many other laptops, the Omen 15 is using a Samsung NVMe drive, mm -hmm. which gives us read write speeds of about 2800 Mbps and 2200 Mbps respectively. Um, that number can vary a little bit over and above depending on the benchmark you're using, but while copying data from our SanDisk Extreme Pro 1TB SSD, we were getting a consistent write speed of about 6 to 700 Mbps, which is actually pretty damn awesome. So uh, when I say 6 to 700 Mbps, I mean megabytes, not megabits. That's important distinction. I wasn't able to test exactly how much of the portion is part of the SLC cache on the Samsung NVMe drive, but needless to say, like, there's very, it's very unlikely that you will be transferring more than 80 gigs of data in one go. Um, so, and, and as long as that's the case, you're getting actually a very, very impressive read write speeds. When it comes to upgradability, HP is actually made a very gamer friendly laptop. Now, opening the machine is a little difficult because of the way the seams are all blended into each other. Uh, but once you gently get your pry tool in there, Taking that bottom off is not very hard. The locks are of just the right resistance and they pop off easily. A look inside reveals two SODIMM slots uh, with 8GB of RAM each in our variant, which means that if you ever wanted to upgrade, if you have got an 8GB variant, you could upgrade your memory as you wish. Secondly, we also see two NVMe slots, which is actually pretty awesome because later down the line, if you ever decide that you wanted more storage, you can add an additional NVMe drive in there for a total of two terabytes of storage if you ever could afford one. Secondly, there's also this massive battery. Now, one thing that's actually stuck out to us during the teardown is the fact that every replaceable component inside this laptop has a spare code attached to it which means the stickers tell you exactly which spare part you need to get from hp's inventory in order to replace this one so which is actually really helpful it eliminates the issue of compatibility it eliminates the issue of you know any sort of mistakenly buying the wrong product so there's that we also see these two fans that are attached to the cpu and gpu and seven copper heat pipes but what's really, really interesting is that the fin stack that's attached to the heat pipe doesn't just end at the left side and the right side. It actually extends all the way from the left to the right. So what this means is that you have effectively a very large area for the system to spread heat over, effectively dissipating it from the insides. And that is probably the secret to how HP has managed to cool this laptop so well. Overall, the HP Omen 15, let's let's talk about the good stuff. Uh, gaming performance is actually at par with any medium tier PC, mid tier gaming laptop actually, because the 1650 Ti is what holds the frame rates back. 
the thermals are super in check like you're not gonna find yourself thinking oh this laptop's overheating oh my god this is thermal throttling that just does not happen regardless of you know the fact that you may be rendering thousands of raw files or you may be exporting 4k video or you may be engaged in a six hour long gaming session doesn't matter um things stay cool and the really nice part is that you don't even have to set custom fan profiles the fan control curves built into the omen command center leave it on auto it does everything by itself you can set it to max if you wanted to if you feel like you know um you're, you don't have air conditioning so you need better uh, fan speed over here to keep things cooler you can set it to maximum you could also choose a manual mode so that's nice uh, but honestly we left everything on auto and things worked out just fine like imagine like cpu is not going over 80 85 degrees for the most part while gaming that's actually pretty impressive so overall top points to the hp omen 15 um, where it does really really mess up is this lid which just feels like such a mismatch this laptop is so beautifully designed it's ridiculous the build and design is amazing on it but this lid feels like it, it just feels like a personality disorder it feels like this is these are two different personalities mashed together or two different people put together it, it just does not feel like one seamless thing but overall if you had to get one this would be a pretty good choice especially because you get a 144 hertz display and you get pretty solid reliable performance overall we're very impressed with the way the insides are laid out it's actually a very gamer friendly layout and uh, the fact that HP has given so many upgrade options is definitely a big plus. Overall, fairly good laptop, definitely worth considering and worth checking out. And if, you, if you're very, very particular about build quality, this lid is really going to piss you off. Like this is, this is just bad. And it's everywhere. It creaks and shakes and has flex. So that's a review of the HP Omen 15. I'm sure you'll have questions. If you have any comments, you can leave your suggestions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching and have a lovely day.